I was thinking about some of the teams that have just one of the darkest futures in the league. And who would you say has like one of the worst futures out of all 30 NBA teams? And I think the Washington Wizards are up. Either it's committing 50 plus million to Bradley Beal and being too good to not get a good pick in the lottery or being too bad to really do anything in the playoffs. The Wizards are in purgatory, the worst place to be in the NBA. So what is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? We're doing the number eight overall pick, Washington Wizards rebuild. I'm gonna try to turn this team around whose second and third best players are free agents at the end of the year or basically in the offseason. They have an okay young core like Denny of Dia and Corey Kispert are fun guys and we'll see if we can get anything out of Johnny Davis. So before we get back into the rebuild, I want to give a word from today's sponsor, NBA So Rare. If you love rebuilding teams and managing rosters, So Rare is the fantasy sports game for you. It features officially licensed digital player cards that you could buy, sell, trade, and collect that are officially licensed by the NBA. And this isn't like some 2K thing where you got to change your my team year over year. You get these cards cards forever so if you have a player this season you can use them in next nba season you could join different leagues depending on how your roster is constructed you could join a limited contender tournament common card tournaments and i'm currently scouting guys for next season that i want on my roster i feel like somebody like caleb martin is such a value play to get him as a limited card these are all the cards i have right now some guys that might change teams next year like austin reeves russell westbrook Anthony Simons and DeAndre Aiden, two of my limited contender cards. Like, both these players could be on different teams next year, so I gotta look out for that. And yo, the NBA season is finishing up, and while you still can buy, sell, and collect cards throughout the NBA, if you're an MLB fan, they are in full swing as well, officially licensed by the MLB. Or if you're a soccer fan, they have officially licensed soccer cards as well. So you can get your team started with So Rare. link in the description below. You get 10 free common cards when you sign up. And in So Rare, if you join limited contender tournaments, you could win prizes. NBA tickets, NBA merch. It's the game that gives back as well. So yeah, get started on So Rare right now. Link in the description. And thank you to So Rare for sponsoring today's video. But this team doesn't have much of a direction at the moment. So we're actually going to go with the new head coach. I'm going to fire Wes Unseld. We're going to go with Joe Prunty, the interim head coach for the Hawks when they ended up firing Nate McMillan before they got Quinn Schneider. I'm just going to give him a two-year deal though. And we get Joe Prunty. Let's go. So honestly, when it was draft lottery night, one of the teams that I did want to get lucky were the Wizards because it feels like the Wizards haven't done much in the last 20 years. Yeah, they had those John Wall and Bradley Beal teams, which were fun, but the furthest they ever went in the playoffs was game seven of the 2018 Eastern Conference semifinals. They never made it out of round two. They lost to a very young Tatum and Brown team. So I think priority number one is probably to re-sign Kristaps Porzingis. I think with having Kispert and Denny, who I want to develop. And we also have Johnny Davis and Bradley Beal. Maybe we draft another wing. Like, we don't really need Kuzma. So I think he's more inclined to leave us. And I don't even know if Kuzma wants to stay as a wizard. I feel like he wants to go to a bigger market team. So with the eighth overall pick, there are going to be a ton of point guards on the board. Either it's Casey Wallace, Jalen hood Shafino, Kobe Bufkin, Nick Smith Jr., Anthony Black. We're going to have plenty of options. Uh, I believe Amen Thompson will be off the board by the time we are picking it. Oh, the Pistons take Anthony Black. Okay. That's who I had in mind of taking here with the eighth overall pick. You have Cade Cunningham and Ivy. What are you doing? And there goes Amen Thompson to the Magic, a team that also has plenty of point guards. So with the eighth overall pick, I'm going to select Kaysen Wallace out of Kentucky, one of the best defenders in this class, which is huge for us because we need that point guard next to Beal that can help him out on the defensive side of the ball, and that's what Kaysen Wallace can be for us. We also have Monty Morris and DeLon Wright, two veteran backup point guards that I don't need. And I'm going to look to try to trade Monty Morris to get back in the first round. And I want to see if the Nets would give me one of their first round picks We'll try to see if we can get 21 for Monty Morris because the Nets are trying to win because they don't have their first round picks from the James Harden trade. So they agree to that. And we're going to take Gregory Jackson out of South Carolina. Somebody that has a super high ceiling, but a very low floor. He could be a total flame out in the NBA. If his shot selection isn't there, he's not efficient. But what I do like about him is he's kind of a stretch four type because he has an okay shot. We'll just see if his shot selection can move up to what he did at South Carolina, even though he wasn't consistent. But he's an all right playmaker at the four. I do worry about his turnover though. And in the second round, we're going to take Hami Hakez out of UCLA. I also had one more second round pick and I took Amari Bailey. So we got two UCLA players there in the second round, adding four new rookies to the team. Now team player options, KP opts in. Whoa. Okay. I kind of like that. I don't have to commit to a five-year deal with KP. We could see him for another year and hey, maybe we're not good at the deadline and I can move him if we wanted to. Kuzma opts out, no surprise, picking up the team options on Kispert and Avdia and going to decline it on Xavier Cook. So let's go here to free agency where we're not going to have really much money since we're paying almost $90 million to KP and Beal. Kendrick Nunn, free agent. Taz Gibson, free agent. We're going to let them both walk. So right now, we'll probably have... 
KP at the four, Gafford at the five, or maybe we run KP at the five. I think we're fine on big man. And I want to see what this team can do, which is kind of the young pieces they have. Like I'm going to start Case and Wallace. I do want to play Johnny Davis still a little bit this year. I want to play Corey Kispert and Denny Avdia a ton of minutes. And we got KP, we got Gafford. I want to play Gregory Jackson as well. So I don't really think I'm going to do anything in free agency. Even though we do have about $10 million. And while I do want to make the playoffs, I don't want to just spend the money to spend the money. So yeah, we are going to renounce the rights on Kyle Kuzma. He ended up signing with the OKC Thunder. Okay, three years, $46 million. That's actually a solid offer. Probably underpaid. I did implement new contract sliders. You could see them in the Pacers rebuild. Go watch that if you want to see what they were. I posted in that video. We don't see any regression from Beal, which is good. We see some progression out of KP, Gafford, Kispert, Denny, uh, Johnny Davis as well. You know what? I'll take that. All right, so this is what the rotation is going to look like. Kaysen Wallace, don't worry, I'm going to change his uh, first name to Kaysen from Carson. We got Beal at the two, Kispert at the three, KB at the four, Gafford at the five. Denny's going to be the sixth man, Johnny Davis, seventh man, Gregory Jackson, eighth man, and DeLon Wright, ninth man. Maybe the first person in could be Hami Haquez, it could be Amari Bailey or Isaiah Todd if an injury does occur. We're three-star balanced right now. All right, game one on the road against the Chicago Bulls. Hey, a defensive game, but we end up winning by five to start the year. A win is a win. Bradley Beal drops 24. KP shoots four for 11. Case and Wallace gets a double-double with rebounds in his first career game. Okay, Denny and Kispert both struggle from the field. Combined five for 23. Not great. We started the season 2-0. Oh, that's huge. Bradley Beal with 28 points. KP with 20. Kispert knocks down four threes. You'd love to see that. A great game from Gregory Jackson. Home game against the Knicks, and we end up winning by 25. The Washington Wizards have started the season 3-0. Case and Wallace with a stud of a game. 21-6, 7-4 with only one turnover. Road game against the Sixers. I don't... Oh my God, we won by one. We are 4-0 to start the year. This is crazy. Kispert with 26. Buell with 23. Case and Wallace, 15-7. I love that. Denny... 15, 6, and 5. KP has been struggling to start the season, which is fine, because maybe this means I'm not going to commit long-term money to him. And we beat the Pistons by one point. Wow, we are winning all these close games. This is definitely not sustainable, but I will 100% take a 5-0 start. Can we go 6-0? We're going to decline this trade, even though it's a nice offer. Oh my god, we are 6-0 to start the season. This is kind of crazy. Case and Wallace... You know, he's shooting well from three. I, it's fine. Like a rookie guard, they're going to be inefficient. Road game against the Pelicans. There is our first L. We end up losing by 13 points. Beal had 26 and 7. Kispert, 17 points. He's shooting 45% from three to start the season. Ooh, Johnny Davis is off to a weird start. 38 from three is great. 85 from the line. But can we get that field goal percentage up, please? So brutal news is Denny Abdiad tears his right hamstring. He's out eight to 10 weeks. Corey Kispert, it's been kind of cold as of late. He's shooting 40% from downtown, which hurts. And like, we've come back down to earth a little bit, but we're still six games above 500, which I will definitely take for this Wizards team. Like we just beat the Pacers 152-104. Kispert dropped 34 points. That's kind of crazy. And it is the all-star draft. I honestly think like we might get an all-star okay it's Kristaps Porzingis rather than Bradley Beal and in my Pacers rebuild I completely missed like one year Chris Middleton made the all-star game so I have to like double check these now but KP is playing for that extension man 21 and a half points nine rebounds two assists 1.6 blocks shooting 38 from three is kind of that perfect power forward for us right now we beat the magic can we beat the Sixers at home we can't so we're going into the deadline seven games above 500 that is pretty good like right now we are currently the five seed in the east bradley beal is averaging 25 points in his age 30 season on elite efficiency 54 from the field 43 from three 81 from the line five assists three rebounds there we already went over kp's numbers Corey Kispert, number two scorer. I'm fine with this. 39 from 395 from the line. Casey Wallace, as a rookie, has been fine. 12 and a half points, five rebounds, five and a half assists. He's averaging two steals a night. That's the defensive minded point guard we needed. And he's shooting at a 57% true shooting, which is great. Denny Abdia has struggled, which sucks because it is a contract year for him. Johnny Davis has been playing much better in year two. Okay, there we go, Johnny Davis. We just got to give him some time. Gafford's been fine as the center. Gregory Jackson's efficiency has been kind of rough. I think I'm going to tell him and Denny to stop taking threes for the remainder of the year, or just not as much. So I don't think I'm going to be a seller and trade away Chris stops. I don't really think I'm going to be a buyer. And oh, Zach Levine is interesting. Huh. Um, we don't have, we don't have the money to get there. Like, unfortunately, Zach Levine is making so much money. And I think we do have some cap space. You know what? I'm kind of intrigued on adding Zach Levine to this team. Like, I, he's somebody I don't normally trade for. He's on the trade block currently. I would have to... I don't even know how I'd get there financially. Like, I would have to give them back Gafford, which I don't want to do. But I thought we had some cap space. 
Like, say I gave you Gregory Jackson, DeLon Wright, and Gafford, and we're still 11 million off. I don't know how. I thought we were able to keep on more money. So it's really impossible for me to get Zach Levine, sadly, because he's somebody I would totally go after. Now, we might revisit this in the offseason, so you could be on the lookout for that 100%. Is a big three of Beal Levine and KP going to get me a championship? Maybe in real life. Probably not, but in 2K maybe. So we'll definitely revisit that if he doesn't get traded in the offseason. Uh, anybody else that's potentially on the block DeAndre Aiden I mean that is an upgrade over Gafford but I don't really think that this team is a championship team this season so I don't want to uh just make any deal that's nearsighted because like I don't want to screw myself over for future years just to maybe lose in round two this year so let's basically see if KP would sign an extension with us he will Ooh, that's pretty good value for Chris Dops. Uh, I would probably give him, because like big man, like it's tough to get paid that much unless you're like a top tier elite big man. Uh, but KP does space the four. Four years for Chris Dops, 25 mil a year. It'll go up to around 30 mil a year. I will give him this contract. Yeah, let's get that done with KP and bring him back to be wizard. I didn't want to like take the chance of him hitting free agency and I don't get him back and then I'm kind of screwed. Oof, and Kaysen Wallace breaks his left leg out eight to 10 weeks. That hurts a lot. So yeah, DeLon Wright is going to be our starting point guard until he comes back and we're not nine games above 500 as well all right wallace is back and we're gonna have a good season man we're gonna finish above 500 which is nice like we're not gonna be in purgatory let's maybe get 50 wins i know we can't but we're gonna end the season with 47 wins 35 losses john morant wins mvp not if he plays half the games next year that's not gonna be possible Wemby gets rookie of the year Upper and Shangun six man, Evan Mobley Depoy, Jalen Duran most improved, and JB Bigger staff coach of the year. We got no wizards on the all NBA teams. Anybody on the all defensive team? Nope. And then what about Casey Wallace for all rookie teams? He gets on second team. He's gonna be healthy, ready to go for the playoffs, in which we are the five seed. I would say that's the success of a season. We're taking on the four seeded Atlanta Hawks in round one. I'm very intrigued on what the Hawks are gonna do this offseason. Just a sidebar. But yeah, uh Corey Kispert finished the season very strong, shooting 39 from three. 90 from the line he's under contract again next year on his team deal denny finished the season strong as well seven rebounds three assists we'll see what he asks for in free agency but i will think about bringing him back um johnny davis i thought was very good for us i think he's like locked in as a solid seventh man all right so it's gonna be the same starting five beal's gonna get 38 minutes tonight kp 36 Denny's going to be the sixth man with Davis Jackson and right off the bench. System proficiency under Prunty going up against his former team. Three-star balance. So let's see. Can we beat Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks? Uh, we do lose game one. We know how good they are in the simulation. Ooh, is AJ Griffin only getting 15 minutes a night? Do I buy low on him in the offseason? We do have a ton of wings, though. So, you know, let me worry about this series first, in which Kispert and Davis need to shoot better in game two. And in game two, we end up winning. There we go. We blow them out in the fourth quarter. A nice fourth quarter comeback there. Bradley Beal with 36 points. KP with 26. Case and Wallace with 20. Only two assists, though. Yeah, nobody's really getting it done on the assist, but we still had 22. Game three goes to the Atlanta Hawks. They end up beating us by six. Case and Wallace scored a... Game, or excuse me, team high 23, but only two assists from him. Averaging 2.7 assists throughout the first three games. Denny, oh man, if you want that contract, you got to play better. Game four went to the Atlanta Hawks in which they beat us by 13 at home at the Capital One Center or Capital One Arena. And we ended up, yeah, losing by 13. KP with 26 and seven. Wallace instead of eight assists here. Denny shot four for seven. Beal five for 14. Damn, all right, down three to one. I didn't really expect to beat the Hawks. I would have liked to put up a better fight, though. Maybe lose in six, seven, not in five. That is an embarrassing way to go out. Bradley Beal, six for 22, man. The dude I can't trade, unless it's like a desperate team. And you're going to have the Cavs and the Pelicans in the finals. And the Cavs win in six with Darius Garland being your finals MVP. Melo and Chris Paul retire, even though Melo technically just retired in real life. Both of them head to the Hall of Fame. And draft lottery time, in which I don't know if we have our first round pick in this year's draft. We will see the Kings win the lottery, Magic at two, Jazz at three. So it says the Thunder have our pick at 23. Let me just double check that. So it is top 12 protected. So yeah, we're not going to get it. We're going to keep Joe Prunty as our head coach. We can win maybe a top assistant though. Can we maybe get like Billy Donovan to be an assistant in Washington? Oh, that would have been sick because he could have maybe recruited Zach Levine. Now, I if I think if I wanted Zach Levine, I probably had to wait on the KP extension. As we're going to get Jock Vaughn to be our assistant head coach as he got let go in Brooklyn. So let's go here to the 2024 NBA draft. We're not going to really be able to pick up Zach Levine unless it's maybe in a Denny Optia sign and trade, I think. Yeah, like we just can't sign him at all. Like it would probably have to be Gafford or ooh, wait, we can. Huh. So Gafford has to be the guy in it to get it done, which I don't know if I want to move Gafford. 
But we get Zach Levine, who's an elite score. He's 29, though. And then we'd have Zach Levine and Bradley Beal, which maybe isn't the best wing duo in the world. But if we surround them with good defenders, like KP, good shot blocker at the four. Kaysen Wallace, great perimeter defender at the one. And then we land a center that is an upgrade over Gafford. Could maybe be the move long term for us. Oh, this is tempting to do, but I don't know if I'm going to do it right now. As the Kings landed Matsus Buzoyos, the number one overall pick. Jazz land their franchise point guard in DJ Wagner. Robert Dillon and falls to five to the Spurs, and they pick up two point guards in this draft. Rookie signings, we got none. Team player options, Kispert, welcome back. Uh, Johnny Davis and Hamid Hawkins, welcome back. I did send Mar Bailey to the G League this year. I think I'm going to pick up the team options on him and Isaiah Todd, who was like the 31st overall pick in the draft a few years ago. Let's give Denny the qualifying offer. And he wants about 17 million, which isn't terrible. All right, so I'm going to give Denny a three-year deal. I'm kind of tempted to using him in a sign and trade to pick up Zach Levine. You know what? I'm... I think I'm kidding though, because I would have to trade Denny, Gafford, and Johnny Davis to pick up Levine. Like that's tough to give up. I'm really eliminating a lot of my depth, which I don't think we can do right now. The Blazers are interested in trading away Clint Capella. I could go for Clint. He would be an upgrade over Gafford. It's just, I don't know if I would want to move Denny Avdi off for him. Michael Porter Jr. is on the trade block. Rudy Gobert, who's on the Knicks, is on the trade block. I don't want Rudy Gobert, who's 32 right now. So I'm going to try to steal Kavon Looney on a three-year deal and even put the last year as a team option. Uh, we can lower that a little bit and we should be able to pick him up on that. Boom, there we go. And then lastly, I just want to get DeLon right back on a two-year deal, fully guaranteed, and we should be able to sign him there. As AD stays in LA, Jalen Brown stays in Boston. Anybody switch teams? DeJounte stays in Atlanta. DeMontis Sabonis goes to Utah. See Occam to Brooklyn and Desmond Bain to Toronto. Okay. Nick Claxton went to the Kings as well. We do start seeing some regression out of Bradley Beal. This is going to be tough, man. This is going to be tough because who is going to step up to be that number one on a championship team if it's not Beal? All right. So as of now, this is how the rotation is going to go. It's going to be a 10-man rotation. It's going to be Wallace, Beal, Kispert, Porzingis, Gafford with a bench of Denny Avdia, Kevon Mooney, Johnny Davis, Gregory Jackson, and DeLon Wright. We still have Hamai Hawkins. Probably is like the first man in in case any injuries happen. We are three and a half star balanced. First game of the season on the road against the Bucks. We end up blowing them out. Okay, that's a good start to the season. Road game here against the Miami Heat. We beat them by 12. All right, I will definitely take that. Case and Wallace with 26 and 9. Could this be his breakout year in year two? I would love that. We beat the Knicks and we are off to a 3 and 0 start. Make that 4 and 0 after beating the Toronto Raptors by 6. Beal drops 30. You'll love to see that. Road game against the Pacers and we are going to win and we start off 5 and 0 once again for the second straight season. Home game against the Magic, we end up losing by 5, which is fine. You know, 5 and 1 start to start the year. I'll take that. All right, so we're killing it this year. Bradley Beal did have an injury for a few weeks, but Hami Hawkes stepped in and was great for us. KP Two-time All-Star in this video for the Washington Wizards. You'd love to see that. But yeah, like that makes me feel even more comfortable if like I trimmed up some of the depth because Hawkes or Hami Hawkes, he averaged 12 points, four and a half rebounds, 2.2 assists, and shot 46 from three. In how many games when Bradley Beal was out? Nine? Like that's an all right sample size. I will take that. We are 37 and 16. 21 games above 500. We're in the race for the one seed with the Pistons and the Hawks and the Cavs, which is weird. Like those are the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Bradley Beal still our leading scorer. 65% true shooting percentage. Corey Kispert, 14.7 points a night. He's due for an extension at the end of the year. Kaysen Wallace has been very good for us. 14, 5, 7.4 assists and 2.1 steals. 39 from three. It's looking like we made the right uh, pick there. Johnny Davis is low-key a beast and needs more minutes. We have too many wings. Ah, uh, man, is Denny Avdia the odd man out? Maybe. Like, look at the efficiency. I'd probably rather play Kispert. Hawk has shown me some talent. Johnny Davis has been good for us in his limited sample size. Maybe I move Denny at the deadline. Maybe. I just hope he's fully healthy by the deadline. Let's get him healthy, please. Please. Oh, my God. Is he really not going to be healthy by the deadline? Because then I can't. Okay. I don't think I could trade him. I don't think I could trade him. And this is the trade deadline, right? Let's see. We simulate through this. Day. Okay, perfect. He's back. Let's go. So let's leave the rotation as it is. We're at the trade deadline. Whoa, Anthony Simons is on the trade block. I just, the fit with him and Beal and Case and Wallace wouldn't be great. Cat is on the block. I don't know if I want another like primary score. 
Like, I do want a good score, but, like, I wouldn't prefer... Like, I would prefer somebody that's maybe just as good on the defensive side of the ball, which is obviously tough to find. Kyrie Irving is on the trade block. Uh, Kyrie at the one, Beal at the two. But Kyrie's getting up there in age, and Casey Wallace has been good. RJ Barrett's on the trade block. Wow, there's actually some good players on the block this deadline. Zach Levine's still on the trade block. Oh, man, that is interesting. But I have so many wings. So I wonder if we should try to add a center... Now, Sabonis just switched teams. Bam is two years left on his deal. Jared Allen, two years left on his deal, but the Cavs are really good in the East. Shangun would be fun. Maybe if the Rockets were bad. Like, Embiid would be cool because they're the worst team in the East, but I just don't think I have the assets to go out and get Embiid. Miles Turner and Kristaps in the front court would be kind of filthy if we pulled that off. The Bulls, yeah, like I said, Levine would be nice. Wendell Carter Jr., maybe. The Suns have Kawhi Leonard. Huh? I'm so confused. Kevin Durant. Oh my God. Did they trade Devin Booker for Kawhi Leonard? No. No freaking way. No way that happened. Did we really let that happen? No, I'm so confused. Where's Devin Booker? Michael Porter Jr. is on that team. So don't tell me Devin Booker's on the Nuggets. Oh my God. Oh my God. There was a Michael Porter Jr. for Devin Booker trade. And then there was a, a Kawhi Leonard, I guess, for Devin Booker. Oh my God. Wait, did Devin Booker play in LA? No, he traded from Phoenix to Denver. That is absurd. That is absurd. So the Rockets are bad, and Shangun is due for an extension at the end of the year. Like, would they have money to take on Denny? Oh, yeah, and I'm like, Shangun's not a great defender, though, which worries me just a little bit. I'm like, Daniel Gafford's been fine. I don't know, though. We are, we're doing well. We are 30, or excuse me, 23 games above 500. Maybe we just ride this team out and see how we can perform in the playoffs. Contract extensions, Beal. I mean, yeah, 18 mil when you're done with that, sure. I guess we got to try to win with Beal, right? Make him a wizard for life. Um, I'll probably give him like a, I don't know, maybe we won't extend him right now. Gafford, we could lock him up on an extension as well, which I'm actually cool with. So we're going to give him 11 mil over two years, still a great tradable contract. And yeah, I'm not extending Beal right now, like I said. Oof, we've had a rough March so far, losing like six out of our last 10 games. Oh man, and we're on another two game losing streak. What's going on in April? We haven't really had any injuries though. We do win 50 games, but that probably costs us the one seed and Case and Wallace is going to be out for the playoffs great. Cade Cunningham wins MVP. Whoa, shout out to Cade in Detroit. Matsas Buzelis, Rookie of the Year. Damian Lillard, six men in Portland. Evan Mobley, Depoy. Killian Hayes, most improved in LA. Okay. Paul Bancaro broke his rib, so he's out two to four weeks. I don't know if they made the playoffs though. No Wizards to be found, unfortunately. So we ended the season as the three seed. Damn, that probably cost us the one seed. We're taking on Delano Benton as the starting point guard and the Toronto Raptors. They got Bain at the two, Brooks at the three, who I believe is Canadian. Um, Scotty Barnes at the four, Pirtle at the five. Is Siakam hurt or he left? He left. So here were the end of the season stats for the team. 21 points for Bradley Beal, 18 and a half for KP, 7.8 rebounds, uh, 14 and a half points for Corey Kispert. Uh, Casey Wallace played great, but he's going to be out for most likely the first two to three series. And I don't know if we're going to make it that far to even think about uh, him coming back. Bradley Beal did average five assists. I think I'm going to start him at the point guard spot for the playoffs. Gregory Jackson's efficiency was better this year, but I don't know if he's even going to be in the playoff rotation. I think I'd rather play Hami Hawkes. So Hawkes and Wright can get 15 apiece. Gafford, 24. Looney, 24. Denny, 30. KP, 36. Kispert, definitely like 32. Um, I'm going to start Johnny Davis at the two, man. If he's going to shoot that well, he should definitely start for us. And let's do about 36 minutes to Bradley Beal for round one. Three and a half star balanced. Can we get a playoff series victory under our belt? We end up winning by 15 in game one. Beal with 24, five assists and five steals. If Beal's going to play that well on defense, we may be chilling until Wallace gets back. We do lose game two though by 15. Kispert with 22. Okay. Davis shot poorly. So did KP and Denny. Game three, we do win by 21 points. KP with 41 and eight. Hell yeah. Beal with nine assists. That is huge. Game four. Four Corey Kispert strains his left Achilles. He's out two to four weeks. So honestly, Jame Hawkes, I know he hasn't been playing all that well in the playoffs, but I may give him like 20 minutes a night. Gafford, sixth man. I guess this is going to enter Gregory Jackson back into the playoff rotation. Oh, this isn't great. Uh, Johnny Davis has been poor for us in the playoffs, but I think I still want to ride with him, KP. Denny's going to get like 33 minutes a night. He's been good in the playoffs. And we'll do about 33 to Johnny Davis. Damn. So we're without Kispert and Casey Wallace, and we win game four by 25 points Beal with 28 kp 19 johnny davis 18 there we go denny with a double double 
even though the overall efficiency wasn't great he did go three for eight from three gafford with a double double let's not blow a three to one lead and boom we win in five without arguably like our third and fourth best players because kp and beal combined for 49 even though the efficiency wasn't great a win is a win kavon looney with 14 rebounds off the bench hell yeah we're gonna be taking on the atlanta hawks we can look to get revenge for them knocking us out last year uh nobody's really hurt on their team at the moment we pull off the upset and drop 44 points in the fourth quarter winning game one because kp just dropped 43 freaking points oh yeah honestly what i might do is like the nuggets like they play like a seven man rotation in the playoffs i don't think i'm gonna play gregory jackson yeah so i think i'm gonna play kp like 42 minutes a night same with beal johnny davis still struggling i think danny we could play like 35 minutes too and then i think we should play the centers more uh, let's do two more to each, and then we'll do one more to Hawkes, who's still not performing all that well, but let's see what happens here in game two. We do end up losing by 10 points. Beal, ah, KP fouled out in 25 minutes. That's brutal. Game three, we end up winning, though, by 16. Beal with 39, Johnny Davis with 22. What a turnaround he's had in this series, man. Denny at 17. There we go, Jaime Hawkes. Like, we win, and KP shot four for 14. Game four, we win. We're up three to one. Denny with 32, 7, 7, and 2. Johnny Davis with 22 points, double doubles for Looney and KP, and we have a chance to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and we do just that. We blow them out here in Game 5, KP and Beal combined for 60, Hawk has with 18 points, and we're going to be taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Game 1, the Cavs do win though by 10. Uh, it's going to be tough to beat this Cavs. Before Game 2 starts, KP has a knee injury, and we end up losing by nine ah oh, johnny davis with 25 that just hurts losing these games okay Corey kispert is back before game three that's huge game number three can we win it nope we end up going down 3-0 we lost by six we choked that in the fourth quarter kp had 29 but it was not enough and game four we end up getting swept all right so we're still a tier away from making it to the nba finals that hurts too because johnny davis was great and we still have him under team control next year as well i think we're gonna look to trade denny avia in the play or in the off season as it's gonna be a timberwolves Cavs finals a team that got gobert a team that got donovan mitchell from the jazz even though the timberwolves traded gobert to the knicks the Cavs win it all with allen being your finals mvp an incredible stat line from him kevin young retires as the sun's assistant head coach even though he's the highest paid assistant in the league draft lottery time i don't think we have any random picks in here but we do get our first round pick which is going to be at number 27 so nothing too crazy joe prunty is up as a head coach like his contract so we could go for Ty Lue, somebody with championship experience which I think could be the move to put us over the edge even though he just brought us to the conference finals I just don't know if he's that guy so I'm still going to give him a two-year deal if Nick Nurse or Ty Lue, or like I guess both decline our deals and we end up getting all three so we're going to get Ty Lue to be our next head coach. So Bradley Beal is now making $53 million a year. That is absurd. So the 76ers had the first overall pick, and they took Dylan Harper. Uh, we took TJ Powers at 27, and there's a chance I try to include him in a trade. Picking up the team options on Case and Wallace, Johnny Davis, and Gregory Jackson. I'm going to give Jaime Jaquez and Corey Kispert their qualifying offers, but not to Amari Bailey or Jared Butler. All right, Bam Adebayo is in the final year of his contract, and the Miami Heat put him up on the trade block. Let's offer a deal of Denny Avdija, who is under contract. He's 24 years old. Gregory Jackson, who we know has potential. Daniel Gafford, who's also under contract and 26 years old. As well as my lottery protected first round pick. This is a lot for a rental. I might not even have to give up the first round pick in my opinion. So three for one. Will they accept this? They do. Now we have a new front court of Bam Adebayo and Kristaps Porzingis. Now that moratorium is finished, let's sign Corey Kispert to a four-year deal worth around 14 mil per year going up annually. We are going to look to bring back Hami Hakez for about $4 million a year, and he accepts that offer. I'm going to also try to sign Trey Jones to be our backup point guard and upgrade over DeLon Wright. And then for the minimum, in case somebody gets hurt, yeah, let's get Karis LeVert and Jay Crowder, some veterans on the team. Why not? And we get both of them. We get Butler and Bailey back on the qualifying offers. Player progression. Beal does regress. I think it's fine. Like, I like this team how it is. I'm hoping Bam and KP can work out together. And we do have a new head coach in Ty Lue. I do have to release somebody, though. So it's going to be Jared Butler. All right, so this is how the team is going to look. Wallace, Beal, Kispert, KP, out of bio is the starting five. And then we have Johnny Davis, Trey Jones, Kevon Looney, and Hami Hawkins off the bench. Definitely our best bench in this video. We're four-star balance. Let's see how we start the season on the road against the... 
Mavericks against KP's former team. He gets hurt, but it's not a long injury. And hey, a win is a win by 45 points. So it was a very nice win. And KP, or excuse me, Beal still has it. And great games from Casey Wallace and KP. Game number two at home against the Memphis Grizzlies. We end up winning by seven. There we go. Kispert hits six threes. Road game against the Heat, and we win by eight. Are we going to start off the season 5-0 and again as Bam goes off against his former team? Road game against the Raptors. KP is back. And can we start the season four now? No, we end up losing by 24. That's fine. As Beal was shot four for 21. So our lone all-star this year is Bam Adebayo, who's averaging 16.7 points, 10.8 rebounds, 4.1 assists. Now, if Bam left us in free agency, it wouldn't be the end of the world because I didn't give up like so much to get him, but it would hurt a little bit because he does want to test free agency. And KP has maybe not enjoyed playing next to Bam Adebayo, which... It's definitely something to keep an eye on. We are 31 and 23, and I guess I'm regretting the BAM trade. Maybe that was a little bit premature in what we needed to do. Shout out to Case and Wallace, averaging 16 a night. Beal is definitely starting to regress at age 32, and currently has a $57 million player option, which he's obviously going to opt into. We're going to advance past the deadline without making any trades and hoping for the best when the playoffs come. Kristaps has also had so many different injuries this season. We still can win 50 games. Let's hope we end up doing that because if we go from winning 50 games with uh, Joe Prunty and then not with, with Ty Lue, it's kind of an L. But Trey Jones, he's also been hurt a ton this season. Good thing we have DeLon Wright as well. Can we please end the season with no major injuries for the playoffs? We are 14 games above 500. Make that 15. All right, let's finish with... Uh, Nah, that was our chance to finish with 50 wins, and we end up going 48 and 33. Is Wemby in year three is your MVP? All right, I don't normally see that in my rebuilds yet of him winning MVP that early, so that's kind of crazy. We had nobody win any awards, and we are the four seed this year. Here were the player stats. I don't know. I, I regret the BAM trade, but shout out to Johnny Davis, man, who's kind of elite. All right, round one against the Charlotte Hornets, Lamelo Ball, Jalen Suggs. Brandon Miller is their one through three. That's fun. And then they have Jordan Poole off the bench as well. It's two Southeast Division matchups. Trey Jones is back. Okay. How many Hawkins is off to a six start in the playoffs? So is Johnny Davis. Damn. KP shooting the ball at an elite clip. Corey Kispert's averaging 24 points in the first three games. Beal's averaging 28 and a half. Wait, what is what happened in the first two games? Excuse me, not three. Yeah, we dropped 149, then 134. Game three, we end up going up 3-0. Let's freaking go, man. Kispert with 33 points. He had seven threes. Bam out of bio with a monster performance. Let's not blow a 3 0 lead. And Corey Kispert breaks his left thigh. He is out for the season after an elite round one. That just hurts so much. So, next man up, like, Hame Hawkins is going to get in there. I think, do I want to play DeLon Wright and Trey Jones? Not really. So, Karis Levert's going to get like 12 minutes a night. We'll probably go like, I don't even know, 14. To tr we'll do 15 to Trey Jones. Uh, Jaime Jaquez is going to get like 26 minutes a night as a six man. And let's do 32 to Johnny Davis, who's now going to be the small forward as we take on the please be Boston Celtics. Now it's the Cavs. Do I have much hope in winning this series? I do not. They have Josh Hart. Oh, that just kind of completes their team. We're probably going to get swept. Game one, we lose by one in overtime. That could be the series right there. We had a chance to win it. Great games from BLKP and Bam. But unfortunately... We go down to, uh, we lose by seven. Man, another close one. Johnny Davis with an elite performance. Game three goes to the Cavs as we lose by four. Ugh, all these games have been close, but we can't get it done. And we end up, all right, winning game four. I will take that case in Wallace with seven steals. Could we maybe force a game six? That would be kind of crazy to win on the road. It's just so many of these games were winnable that we lost by within single digits. And it looks like we are going to lose game five. I don't know. We're down by three. Another close one. But the Cavs are just so good in the sim. And we pull out the three-point victory. Okay, Beal with 28. KP with 24. Wallace with a great game, even though the efficiency wasn't there. So without Corey Kispert, we're going to a game six. All right, game six. We're in Washington for this one as we take... All right, we're tied here in the second quarter. It's a close one. All these games have been close. I just can't believe we lost like that game one. Uh, we're down by nine at the moment, but we come back there in the third. We're down by eight, and we end up blowing it in the fourth quarter. We kind of came back at the end, but we end up losing by 11. Bam, goes out with a bang. Well, now I feel like I got to re-sign Bam after that playoff performance. Case and Wallace kind of broke out. Bradley Beal was still really consistent for us at age 32. KP was great for us in the playoffs. Johnny Davis struggled. Oh, just that Kispert injury really hurt us. So, yeah, another year, another playoff disappointment for this Wizards team. And the Cavs win in six with Moby being your finals MVP. Maybe I shouldn't have fired Prunty and I should have just not picked up Ty Lue. Harden and Russ head to the Hall of Fame. We have the 24th pick in the draft. 
All right, so we're going to trade TJ Powers, who we took in the first round last year. Trey Jones, after one year in Washington, our 20-whatever, seventh pick and a second. But we're getting Talon Horton Tucker. We're also getting a Euro stash player as well. But yeah, THT is going to be the backup point guard. He's actually super underrated in TK. We're going to sign our second round pick. Team player options, Beal opts in to $57 million. No surprise there. Johnny Davis, I want to pay a ton of money to this offseason. Yeah, let's make sure we bring back Bama to bio. I can give him that fifth year. Uh, we'll... Just give him that. Yeah, we're going to pay him all that money. And then I... Okay, we get him. Let's go. $218 million for Bam. That's so much. But there's really nothing else I can do. And I do want to pay Johnny Davis, who honestly deservingly wants 18 mil. Like, you were great for us. We're going to be paying the luxury tax this year for sure. And we get him on that deal. Beal regresses down to an 83 overall. That hurts a lot. All right, so it's going to be a Wallace Beal, Kisper, Porzingis out of bio starting five once again with Johnny Davis, THT, Kavan Mooney, Hami Hakas off the bench. We are four and a half star balance. This might be our best team yet. Let's see how we can perform this season. We don't start off 5-0 and L like we have in the past. So Shea just alexander wins MVP this year. Then you have Cameron Boozer as your Rookie of the Year in Phoenix. Xavier Booker gets Sixth Man of the Year in Minnesota. Giannis Depoy, he's on the Clippers now. Max Christie, most improved in Dallas. Eric Carlisle's probably still have the Pacers gets Coach of the Year. Kristaps Sporzingis makes All-NBA third team this year. All right, he averaged 20-9, and nine, shot 41 from three. He was an All-Star this year four times in this video, or three times, I should say. And we finish the season as the two seed in the Eastern Conference. We're going over against the Hawks like once again in the playoffs here in round one. We missed out on that one seed by one game. Bradley Beal averaged 18 points. Still shot like amazing from the field. Johnny Davis is an elite six man, 18 points. He shot 45 from downtown. Like where did that come from? Bam was great for us this season. Kaysen Wallace, 7.7 7 assists, 40 from three out of him. Kispert's still an elite shooter. I think Taylor Horan Tucker was fine. Same with Looney and Hawkes. As we are fully healthy from the playoffs, this is going to be the rotation. 33 to the backcourt, 28 Kispert, 35 to the frontcourt. Davis, THT, Looney, and Hawkins off the bench. Under Ty Lue, this is a four and a half star balanced team. Can we please beat the Hawks in round one? Yes. Okay. A gentleman sweep. I will take that. KP, 28 and 10. Beal, 27 points. The OG's got it done. Now we're taking on the Cavs again. All right. They have Trey White as their small forward. No longer is it Josh Hart, but this team is still so good. I feel like they're going to beat us. Game one, we beat them though. Okay, by 32 points. Beal and KP for 61. Bam with 24. Yeah, like Mobley had 8 points. Jared Allen did have 10. Can we win game 2? Yes, we can. Let's go by 1 point. Hey, we, we could have beat them last year. So many of the games were close. Johnny Davis shot really poor away from the field. But hey, a win is a win. Game 3 we win. Oh my god, we are 7-0 in the playoffs. And we beat them by 3. You just gotta win the close ones. And last year we lost all the close ones. But this time, we're not gonna blow a 3-0 lead, right? Yep, we are... I say undefeated in the playoffs, we're not. We're eight and one though. I will definitely take that. Three guys averaging above 20 plus points. Beal, 25. KP, basically 27. Yeah, these guys killed it in round two. Case and Wallace definitely struggled. But now we're going to take on the Pistons. They've had an MVP in this video in Cade Cunningham. They have Anthony Black, who I wanted the draft. And they put him at the small forward spot. And he's been killing it in the playoffs. He's averaging eight and a half assists. Jaden Ivey's averaging six and a half and Cade's averaging 12 and a half. That's absurd. And they have the 2K like God and Jalen Duran. Okay, yeah, we might be screwed. Game one, we win. All right, we blow them out. We drop what? Whoa, Case and Wallace. 37 points. Game two goes to the Washington Wizards by 20. Johnny Davis with 27. Wallace 23 and 10. Game number three, we lose. Okay, just don't let them tie it up. It's six for 22. Why is Kisper taking 22 shots tonight? Why? Game three. Four, we win. We're up three games to one. We beat them by 22 points. KP with 31 and 18. Let's go to the finals. Okay. Oh, we lost by one. In game five, that hurts. Game six, we win. Oh my God, yes. We didn't go to a game seven. KP, man, is on his way. He might be the best big in the NBA at this point. Ignore overall. Okay, he's not. He's not the best big. But all NBA third team, 26 and 10 in the playoffs at an elite clip. He's one of the better big mans in the league. And we're going to be taking on the... Houston Rockets with Jalen Green. Kennedy Chandler is their point guard. Okay, Cam Whitmore at the three. They still have Shangun, who I kind of wanted to trade for in this video. Game one goes to the Washington Wizards by 14. Taylor Horn Tucker at 18 points off the bench. And we take game two. Let's go. Bam with 32. Beal 21. Kisper 21. Game three goes to the Wizards. And it looks like we are going to win the 2027 NBA Finals if we don't blow a 3-0 lead. Because we just lost game four. Don't lose game five. Okay. 
we lost game five. Don't lose game six. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we don't blow a 3 0 lead. And Bam out of bio. Not KP is your finals MVP. I am so happy we won a championship this year because look how bad that Bre or that Bam out of bio contract was going to get as we finally got off the Beal contract. Let me know who you think the Washington Wizards should draft at number eight in this draft. Or like, let me know what you think they should do in this offseason. Is there any team that would trade for Bradley Beal? Do you just say screw it and get Tobias Harris and a couple picks from the Sixers? Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you for watching. Jump a like if you did enjoy, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.